Hey guys, welcome back to the Assistive OT webpage. If you've been following along or watch any of my other videos, you already know that my name is Natalie, and this is a part of my OTD capstone project focusing on adaptive equipment for pediatrics. If you're a new friend joining us or this is your first time watching my videos, make sure that you head to my intro video to hear a little bit about this project and fill out the Start Here survey so I can find out a little bit about who you are, why you're here, and also help me fill out things for my capstone project. So today is a really exciting day. Today we're gonna to talk about feeding. I have a whole bunch of things here. Um, obviously, if you are an OT, OT student, a parent, whoever you may be, you already know feeding is not just one thing. Feeding difficulties can come from uh, oral motor issues, um, dysphagia issues, sensory issues, um, or there's a lot of motor compartments as well that, or components, my words, components that go together um, that just don't fit right. But I have a couple of things here that are going to focus on making it a little bit easier to be able to independently feed um, in terms of having the child feed themselves or make it a little bit easier for them to complete the task as independently as possible. So I featured some of these things in my other videos because I think as an OT student who has a lot of student loans, finding things that you can use in multiple ways um, across different occupations, different tasks, different areas in your house or in your OT toolbox is something that is really beneficial for me. Um, definitely, I don't want to have, you know, an entire bookcase of things that I could use but there's so many things I'm overwhelmed, I don't know what to pick. So having a few good core things in your toolbox as a parent and OT, um, you know, whatever your field may be, definitely is something I would suggest. So you'll see a lot of these things you've either already seen in some of my videos or you've seen in my AE list on the website. So if you think I'm using them repetitively, there's a reason. Um, they are great tools, great products. I obviously have tried all these things myself as I show you, and it's not just something I'm like hyping up for any reason. It's just something I truly find to be beneficial. So again, you've seen some of these things before if you watch my videos, and if not, you'll see them once you watch more. But you have seen these bowls, and I feature them, I'm pretty sure, in the play video, um, and then my video that I did with Easy Hold and Functional Hand. So they're suction cup. I have a wood table that has a lacquer over it, so it's it's gonna be, um, it sticks to this, but it definitely would stick a lot better to a normal kitchen table, treatment table, um, high chair especially, or you know if you're using a Riften activity chair or um, a Firefly activity chair, kind of whatever you're using that has a tray, definitely would be beneficial. So. They come in three sizes. These are uh, the Munchkin brand. Um, I have seen a bunch of suction couples and have thrown a lot of suction couples out because they suction and then you wash them one time and they don't suction anymore. Um, so these have been run through my dishwasher. So I could show that they do still stick. So we have a larger one, a medium size, and a small. So depending what you're feeding, whether you're doing cereal, um, introducing, you know, new texture foods such as applesauce or yogurt or different things, depending what you're working on. If you have someone um, who, you know, overshoots the bowl, doesn't know strength, um, has poor coordination, or they're just, um, ha they are, you know, quote unquote, a sensory eater and they are more of a have behaviors where they throw things these are great so you just suction cup them and I'm gonna suction them all to this table like I said um, this definitely they work on this table but because of the finish on it it definitely would work better on a different table so as you can see I'm moving them and my whole table is moving they're not going anywhere um, but there is and you can see right here when you're trying to get them away 
which I love that they're really not moving, even on this finish. You just go where the nub is and you just pick it up and it unsuctions. Um, really simple, not something that you right away would be like, oh, that's a adaptive equipment. Anything that you can find that assists in a task. Look at that. I'm even struggling getting this one off. Ooh, there it goes. Um, anything that you can find in a task that makes it a little bit easier in terms of whatever you're working on, I'd call that adaptive or assistive. You know, it's, it's going to make the task easier for people who are trying to feed themselves but have a tremor or have a coordination issue. So being able to have something to where it's not going to move and being able to, you know, you're, you're trying to get whatever you're getting and you're putting pressure, it's not going to spill all over you. Um, so I love these, but oh, there they go. Super suctiony. So I throw things all around today. So we have those. I also have suction cup plates. These are the Nook brand. Um, if you worked in any clinic, you know Nook brushes. Nook is really coming about when it comes into um, other feeding equipment. So I love that. But these are smaller suction ones. Um, so definitely something different that it's going to stick. Again, this is a weird finish. So you're just going to want to press them where they are. And see, this one's not sticking to my table. But they definitely stick. Um, same thing. If you're trying to feed and you have a hard time getting anything up and you're moving the plate, how unsuction it. You're trying to get things and they can't because it's going everywhere. It not only decreases the confidence level of being able to independently feed, um, but they're going to get discouraged. They're going to get upset if they're covered in things. Um, but there's a thousand ways to use these, whether you're just introducing food and feeding therapy whether you're a parent and you want to try letting your child feed themselves. I mean, suction cups not going to hurt anybody on anything. It doesn't leave marks um, and they look like normal plates. So even if your child goes to school and they want to be able to feed themselves at lunch, packing these, they look like normal plates. They, you just wrap them and you're good. So there's those. These come in a two pack. I think I linked them on my list as well. Again, throwing things all around. Now that I'm done throwing things and I have everything here, um, again, this is just that grippy mat. Um, I didn't cut it yet just so I can show how much you really get. It's a really big roll of it. I got this from the dollar store. You can get, you know, the brand name stuff and it works very similarly. But if you're going to use this in multiple areas of your house, whether you're doing feeding, a play activity, um, pretty much anything to where you want a little more grit. I love the dollar store brand. I think it works very similarly. So you can even tape this down with um, duct tape, electric, uh, or painter's tape. I think painter's tape is great because it comes right off. So if you're just going to do it in one area, such as you know, again, a table in your clinic that you're working at or at your house if you're introducing your child to be feeding at the table with the rest of the family, cut it and just cut, you can put it whatever shape, size, anything and just put painter's tape on it and it's not going anywhere. So dollar store trick. So I also have some utensils. There are a bunch of weighted utensils and I'll talk a little bit about them. I don't have them present. I definitely have overexerted myself on Amazon and different sites, but weighted utensils are great when you're trying to give a little bit more feedback or if you need stabilization. So weighted utensils, I've even seen it to where people put um, bolts and things to where they're weighted themselves rather than just ordering them. But it gives a little more stabilization instead of just, you know, scooping and it go everywhere because the child doesn't know how much strength they're using or if they have a tremor, um, different things like that. But I have normal, quote unquote, typical utensils that came from my, um, right out of the dishwasher. But I've showed this before. Um, it comes in a three pack, different sizes, and I'll show you the different sizes 
of just foam grip. It's just to build up utensils, um, you know, whether it be writing utensils, feeding utensils, pretty much anything you could put this on and you kind of just slip it in. Um, you have to play with it depending on what size it is, you know, and you can cut this to whatever you want. So there we go, fighting it now. So I would just cut it here and it would just give a little bit more of a surface area to grab, um, which is also great, but you can make this as big as you want. Um, I've even seen it to where you can cut this part down and if you need a larger surface area, just wrap it around the already large part that you did. Um, another way to build up a utensil, if like I said, you need a larger surface area, if you just have this on hand, you can wrap painter's tape around um, or duct tape as many times as you want and then you'll just put this over top of it. So it really depends on what you have on hand. Whether you have painter's tape, you have some of this foam, um, kind of whatever you really have on hand, but this is pretty cheap on Amazon. I linked it. It came in, I'm pretty sure a six pack and you can cut it to whatever you want to cut it in. Again, they come in three sizes so you can, if you have larger utensils or not, um, these are really great. So there's that. I've showed the functional hand, which is this blue piece um, in one of my other videos before. This just has the easy hold already on it. I put, I think I just leave this one on it because I know this one fits this size, but I love these two pieces together. So you can use these both independently and I'll show you um, following this how to use them independently. But if you just put a spoon in here, whatever utensil you're using, you're just going to pull the bottom part, loop it, and then at the bottom, you're just gonna pull it all the way to the side so it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It gives, I personally think, more stabilization, a longer, for lack of a better term, lever arm to be able to use. Um, but you're just gonna use it like this, and then you can scoop this way. Um, you know, depending on what you're feeding in. You can even use a fork. I think for fork purposes, I love this too, because, you know, again, if you're not, if the child you're working with doesn't have the functional skill to just use a built up handle with the fork, but needs a little bit more help, this is very easy to be able to use because I'm not, and I'll show you with the easy hold, how you're using it in just your hand, but this gives, I feel like more of a stabilization and a longer way to use it, just quote unquote more typical movement patterns. Um, so if you are going to grab anything, you can just grab and bring. So you don't have to have the strength to be able to hold anything. Um, you just have to have some of these other core movement pieces but it's a little bit easier to use. So I'll unhook this. I'll show you how we're gonna use them without. This one might be, yeah. Where are my other ones? So I have all my easy holds here. Um, I think the green one. So again, you can make this as short, as big as you need it to, and you're just gonna put it in, if I can get this to work today, in your hand. It is a very Monday as I'm recording this for me, for me to be able to figure it out. But again, just, it goes right into your hand, which also gives a really great um, input to be able to know where your utensil is. So grabbing it. It's just like a universal cuff. So you've seen the difference between using the functional hand with the easy hold and just this. Um, I've seen it to where people use it kind of however as functional as you can use it. So you could put it if it's easier to use it this way, you could use it this way. Um, it's really at your discretion of what you want to try with your child. If they're more comfortable using it in hand or on the um, backside of their hand, kind of however 
it works the best. Because again, adaptive equipment isn't about a typical movement pattern, typical eating, typical anything that you're doing. It's to be able to assist and adapt the task and make it more functional or independent for that person. So nothing needs to look typical. Everything is at the individual's ability. You know, we're, we're looking at function. We're not looking at, you know, developmentally appropriate, functional, how it goes. This is all, these pieces were built. So function is the priority, independence, participation. So if your child is having, would rather have the fork on the outskirt of their hand versus the inside, or would rather use multiple pieces of equipment together and they're feeding themselves, go ahead. We're all about function and participation. So just my own little mindset there. I love these. Um, these are easy eaters. So I have the left-handed ones. I clearly, when I ordered them, forgot that I was right-handed, but I'm gonna show to my best of my ability. They sell both right and left-handed. Um, and the pack that I ordered came with shields. So these are great for kiddos who have, um, who tend to insert the spoon, fork, whatever utensil too far into their mouth. So where they, you know, activate a gag reflex or could hurt themselves. So, and this is even great for when you're scooping and it just goes all over. And again, that overshooting strength, coordination, not being able to do it. These are great. So um, again, they're curved utensils, so it makes it a little bit easier to be able to just scoop and it's already there. There's no, you don't need a whole lot of um, certain movements that come along with a normal, you know, feeding. So if I was going to feed, you know, I would poke and bring, but like you see all of the motion in my wrist that might've been exaggerated, but generally you know, you're turning. If they don't have, you know, a supination, um, they don't have wrist flexion extension, you know, again, doing a whole bunch of different movement patterns, they don't have it. Curved utensils um, are great, especially like I said, with the shields. So I think I linked these in my AE list. If I haven't, it's gonna be updated before this video goes up. But if it's not, someone shoot me a message. So these are great. Again, fork and spoon. These are amazing. So definitely try these ones out. Um, I actually was recommended these by another OT friend, but you can even use these with Easy Hold. I'll show you real quick because I think that's how I found them. I think I found them through an OT friend who was using them with Easy Holds because we were talking about them and they just kind of popped up. So again, these are left-handed. I keep forgetting. So, you know, insert your hand in or your child's hand, and there it is, that is it. So stab, bring to mouth, and that's it. Easy peasy. Um, so again, I've talked about easy holds. I was talking to my OT mentor, who's really helping me um, with my project, and we have talked about how these are the only thing that fit a bottle, these size. Um, depending on whether it's a universal cuff, whatever you really tried. I've tried universal cuffs, but again, these are by far my favorite. These are, I don't have a bottle, so I grabbed a water bottle. These are really the only things that I found, even like sippy cups that this fits over, that makes it easy. This, this one might be really long, but again, you get the part of it to where it fits right over it. Like the silicone, part of this is amazing. So being able to be able to fit it over a bottle or a sippy cup or, you know, whatever kind of utensil you're using drinking wise, it's, I've never seen any type of device that can hold such things, um, and still give room to do it. So I'm going to bring this closer because again, most bottles are not as large as this, but same thing with a sippy cup or an open cup. You know, obviously it wouldn't be like this, but being able to drink your own cup and have this, amazing. Um, 
Yeah, there's really not another product I've seen across any other pediatric boards that I follow, um, other OTs or my OT mentor that I've talked to um, have seen anything that fits a bottle or another child size cup. So amazing on their part. I will talk about positioning um, for feeding in terms of proper positioning, how to help support positioning and such for feeding in my seating and positioning video. So that is coming soon to the website if it's not already up, depending when this video goes out. Um, it's on my amazing editor because I am not tech savvy when it comes to editing videos. Tech savvy, clearly tech savvy in terms of all of this, but tech savvy in videos is not my forte. So when this video goes out, you guys will see everything. Stay tuned for that seating and positioning video so you can see how to support your kiddo um, for proper positioning to be able to enable participation in feeding. But again, like this video, make sure you fill out that start here survey if you haven't already and leave me a comment, send me an email, anything if you guys have any questions, concerns, or you have some other great piece of AE because I'll do an addition video on two things like this. But thanks guys so much for tuning in and I will see you soon.